Okay guys, part three. Part three started. I wanted to show you guys, um, I had this extra hole that I had created, and I wanna show you how I'm gonna resolve that problem. I'm just gonna leave this upside down and I'll take a Q-tip, or cotton, just regular cotton, and I'll just take and kind of pull this off. It works nice on Q-tips because the size is about perfect. You just pull off a couple of strings of that. Take that little tool, which is just a piece of wire, just kind of wrap it on the tip of the tool. And then you can take and work that into the hole that you're not going to use. And it will just go right in, no problems at all. You can just kind of work it until it gets in there. And the objective is to wick up a medium CA product. And that's going to give us a really nice, firm and strong um, finish. I'm just giving it a couple of drips. Let it work its way down in there. And you're literally done. Um, and what, what that's going to do for you is it's going to fill up the hole, create strength, and it's also going to look better. And so what you can do uh, as a final step if you decide to do it would be to just take some kicker and give it one little spritz. I don't know if you guys can see how good that looks when it's done, but looks pretty good. It's like the hole didn't ever exist, and you get all the strength that you had before. It's a little bit heavier than the foam, obviously, but um, but it's going to fix that problem. So anyway, just keep watching. We got more steps for you coming up. Okay, guys, just wanted to show you how this turned out. Got that installed. Nice, good clearances. It's smooth on the top lip here, but the black line didn't line up perfectly. And uh, that's just something I'll have to deal with. Maybe I can widen the black line a little bit. You can see a nice, good, clean joint and then smooth on the top. The uh, CA filled that stuff up just fine, along with the kicker, set everything up neatly. Nice, good, straight trailing edge. There's full deployment. I don't. I mean, it's not going to go down that much in in application anyway. It's probably going to be something like takeoff flaps, landing flaps, landing flaps, takeoff flaps, something like that. Um, but I'll play with it and see how it responds. Just wanted to show you that as a quick follow up. Uh, technically, it would have been part two from the video, but uh, we run out of memory, so I'll give you a. Heads up here in a minute when I get my control linkage in there and show you how we're going to do that. Alright YouTube, now I have to make the tough decision about control horns. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can skin this cat, but in my case I think the application is pretty obvious given the choices that I have here. Um, I really only have one choice. Quiet Hanny. So we've got these, which are pretty small. Hobby King part number, if you decide you want to try to order them, which I wouldn't go out of your way to order these in particular, but um, what I'm gonna do is I'll just show you kind of where I'm gonna mount these. These are the type that you just kind of pierce into the foam, and then you've got your three control linkages. But in my case, we're doing flaps, so we don't really want to be articulating from way out here. We want to be articulating down low. But being that this is a very light duty flap, uh, excuse me, a light, light duty servo, I'm probably gonna be on the safe side and maybe put my holes down here all the way through that whole area. And then I'll just trim off the top. So we'll see how that works, but uh, just be watching. I'll show you how that works out. Okay guys, I'm here with my choice for uh, the linkage material. Um, what this is, is uh, I'll try to point it at the camera so you can read it. It says 
Precision Metals, made in the USA, stock number 500, which is a .025 music wire, also known as .64 millimeters. I got this at my local hobby shop. You can get it too. It's very thin, but it's very strong. So we'll see how that works. It may be a little bit too thin, but we'll see how it goes, and I'll let you know. Okay, guys, I was telling you I wanted to shorten this thing up. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my Dremel-like tool, turn it on. Just going to trim it right below there. Okay, so that shortens it up quite a bit. And as you can see, that's going to give us a lower control point. So I'll clean that up just a little bit. Probably go ahead and make the other one as well right now. That way I got one for both sides ready to rock and roll. Then of course I got to do a little bit of uh, some sort of a hole. So that, that will receive the super small rod and then that can move the flap. So I'll just show you guys step by step, so we'll pause so you don't have to watch me do Okay guys, real quick I just wanted to show you this. This is the finished product. I've got two of those. This is going to receive my control linkage. It's quite small, so it's not one to focus worth a crap. But I drilled a couple of holes and that way I've got two adjustments. And they're not exactly right, but I'll do Z-bends in my cables. So you'll be able to see that in a minute. Okay, everybody. This is going to be really fun to show you. But that thing is too long. It's going to reach past the thickness of the flap. So what I've found works pretty good. Turn the Dremel on. Cut at a pretty steep angle. And then just work an edge off and then you maintain some sharpness. I mean, really, you're just supporting it until you get this down to the bottom anyway, and that's gonna actually glue into the surface. So, I'll do that to both of those control adapters. Make them as sharp as you want them to be easy to work with. But there's also little ribs on there that help hold it in, so then double check your depth and uh, go forward and prosper. You can do both sides if you want. This is pretty subjective stuff here. You start getting into this little tiny, tiny pieces like this. And it's really just whatever gets the job done. Alright, keep watching guys. Okay guys. This is what this is what the control linkage is going to look like once it's glued. For now, I just cut a series of small holes that turned out to be kind of like a slot. And I remembered that as you close this flap, it's going to want to come in in a touch. And so you'll need to be mindful about how close you try to put it. Typically, a control linkage like on this sailor on here it's going to be lined up with the hinge. Well, this isn't necessarily got to be lined up with the hinge, but it is kind of nice if it is. So that's the way that's going to look. It's going to work pretty nice. I'll get that glued in, and then you should be able to pull it totally square, but we're not going to tend to do that. Anyway, uh, keep watching. More steps to come. Okay, guys. I'm trying to get a shot of this here. You've got... We've got it glued in there now, and basically the CA is set around this. And this is one of those times where you can you can try to rush it if you want, but you're going to probably pay dividends if you take your time on this step. You do have to get that in the right spot. The reason that's a critical spot is because the nature of the mechanism I've only got two hinge points, so you don't want you don't want that control way over here in the middle. 
because it's going to give you all sorts of problems. So we'll just let that we'll just let that be and just give it a couple of drips of CA around the edges. And if you had thin CA, you could get away with doing some thin CA on this as opposed to medium like we've been using the rest of the project, but I'm actually using medium. It seemed to be a little stronger. We'll just let that sit for a second. And we'll probably do just a one little tiny dose of kicker. Get that to cook off quick. And then uh, we'll pretty much be done with this one until we're ready to actually cut the linkage. Of which I've already got the tip started. And uh, make sure you leave yourself a Z-Bend. So that'll be what we're doing next. Okay guys, this is a tricky spot. I've got my linkage here sitting loose. And what I'm attempting to do is make the length so that I can control this flap mechanism from the servo. Um, so one thing I noticed initially is that the way I've held this in here works okay, except that when I start to pivot the wing, it starts binding upon itself. So what I gotta do is I gotta take this out and take my Z-Bend and change that design a little bit. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Of course, there's more than one way to skin this cat, like I said. You can turn it up like this, and what that'll do is that'll give you the ability to maintain the retention, but you're not gonna have to worry about it hitting the wing or the flap as it articulates down because then that'll stay that'll stay free the whole time um, but I may actually want to bend this and bend it so that it's square I haven't decided if I want to just go square like this and then do a z-bend somewhere or if I want to do a bend so probably initially I'll go ahead and do a bend and uh, that bend will give us our baseline as to whether or not we need to do that on the other side um, obviously anytime you have a bend like that in a control rod like this there's a chance it's gonna buckle where it's bent so you'll just have to play it by ear totally um, I could come back here and do another bend too but I'm not sure that I want to do that and to be honest with you I might just yeah I'm probably gonna do a z-bend anyway so the z-bend of course being for adjustment of the play on the flaps so to do a z-bend in my book you basically just bend it one way sharp and then you bend it back the other way sharp as you did before and use the smallest set of pliers you can be effective with to do this because obviously your bends are going to be proportional to the size of your pliers Okay, so we've got that bent, and then we're just going to square it up a little bit. Okay, so now we've got our little our Z bend or our adjustment bend, and then I want to take him and do one more bend here, and that bend's going to take us into the controls. So we'll go ahead and do that right here. And guys, this gets incrementally harder the more complex your bends are to duplicate on the other side. So one trick you can do, just don't worry about making them the same. Uh, they don't have to be the same to operate the same, but you do have to have an approximate shape. So now that you've got it to this point, you can go ahead and cut it. Don't cut so much excess that you have to deal with a ton of excess later. But don't cut it too short or you'll regret it very quickly. Okay, so that piece is pretty warm, so you'll want to, fairly quick order, get that off of the surface of the plane. Clean up your end as much as you can do without causing too much grief for yourself. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to seat that into the top hole of the servo, which is going to give us the most play. And before we do anything like a permanent bend on that, 
we're just going to see how much the throw is. So, flat position. Oh, it just popped out. Dang it, I was afraid that might happen. Uh, one trick you can do for your temporary testing, uh, which works pretty good, is you can put a drip of hot glue on there. And that hot glue will act as a retain retention clip. And that'll just keep it on there while you're testing. Just a temporary thing, obviously. Okay, so we're going to go, there's takeoff flaps, there's landing flaps. See, and you can see my first problem I ran into already. It's a pretty obvious one, and that is I don't have enough stiffness to push this thing back. I can deploy the flaps, but I can't retract the flaps. Part of that comes from not having this tight. There's so much play on this hole. So I think we're going to be able to do it, but we're probably just going to have to straighten this thing. So that's why you guess and check a little bit on this stuff. Because you're never going to really know at the, at the onset. And if you do, you're some sort of a miracle worker. There you go. There's your flap deployment. But still not full retraction. So we're going to have to straighten that thing. And now we know. So I'll go ahead and get that straightened out and we'll show you the outcome. Okay, guys. I've got a linkage in here that deploys the flaps well but it's not retracting the flaps all the way. Now that could be a symptom of the strength of the, the servo, but it could also be a symptom of the linkage being weak. And I haven't determined which side I think it is on. So what I gotta do is I'm just gonna fiddle with it a bunch until, until it gets close enough. Um, in flight, these are gonna, these gonna wanna push back anyway. So in flight, it's possible they get pulled on, but there's very little, there's very little strength issues when you're in this position, because you're pulling down the length of that servo arm. Whereas in the collapse position, we, we are way up at the top of the apex. So maybe what I could do is reposition this so that it's pointed back a little bit to lock them back. And then when it's pulled out, it'll be at less of an apex here. So that's what I'm going to try first. I just wanted to tell you guys what was going on as an update. Okay guys, I just wanted to show you a trick I'm going to do. I need to get more strength out of this linkage because it's wanting to give when I run the servo back to collapse the flap. And so what I've learned is you can take two of them side by side without having to go up to the next size. Throw a little piece of heat shrink over there, heat shrink it, and throw some CA in. That's what I'm going to try for and we'll see how it works. Okay guys, that's right before I heat it, I got thin CA in there right now, so basically that's what it looks like, and uh, it was a doozy to get that piece of heat shrink on there. Um, so the next one I do, if this works, I'm going to make sure to measure and put it on first. And that's after the heat shrink is shrunk down. So basically there's two pieces of this material in there, it makes it a lot stiffer. But it doesn't add that much weight, and plus you have the same size hole for your control linkages. So I'll get it put in there and we'll see how it looks. Okay guys, I'll show you what it looks like now. Take off, or excuse me, land, regular. Take off, landing. So it works really good on those two settings, but then pushing it back is still a bit of a challenge for some reason and um, I think I'm probably going to have to reposition the the main control lever a little bit but we'll see how that goes and uh, I'll show you when I figure it out thanks for hanging in there Ed. okay guys been a while been fighting with this for a long time and I've come to the conclusion that in order to move that thing all the way back to the home position I may need to go up to another size. And so my next uh, try is going to be with same brand, Precision Metals, um, stock number 501, .032 music wire, which is .81 millimeters. And just to refresh your memory, the one I had been using is stock 500, 
500, which is 0 0.025 or 0 0.64 millimeters. So this one here is just slightly larger at 0 0.81 millimeters. So it's about a third again as big and a little heavier, so hopefully we won't have to double it up, make it a little simpler. And uh, we're gonna try to make that linkage so it does work. And I'll keep you in the loop. Okay guys, I just wanted to show you the improvement with just this one little wire. Just making that wire a higher diameter, which couldn't have added all that terribly much weight. Look at the difference, it's huge difference. Um, I think I just gotta figure out a way to get this slop out of here. I've got a little bit of slop in this position here. And so what I gotta do is get that slop out somehow. And once that slop is out, then as I actuate the flaps, then I'll be better allowed, I'll be better allowed to not have so much movement without any throw in the flap. So I'll let you know how I work that out here in a minute. Okay guys, I finally think I got it. A regular position here with just very, very limited amount of slop. It won't hardly move on me. Excuse me. There's my takeoff flaps with no give and then my landing flaps with no give whatsoever. Um, really satisfied with that and you'll notice it does get a tendency to buzz a little bit once in a while but I'm okay with it and it's not touching under here. It looks like it might be but it's not and I'm just really happy with that. I wish I would have about an hour ago done that. You guys see the gap? It's just barely there. And rather than having a Z-bend, I just have that overall arch and I can adjust the amount of throw with that bend. So that's my hope is that when I get the other side done, I'll be allowed to just use that. Same technique. It'd be kind of cool actually if it went the other way because then it would get covered up by the intake but yeah that's that's about it and then what I ended up for settings was um, so far here I'll wake it up so you can see 15 60 100 so servo set up flaps are back to 100 I had actually increased that a little bit I wouldn't mind bringing that out a little bit oops so if I just bring this setting up, I can go up to like as much as, I usually go about 145 is about the max, that way I'm not totally overdriving the servo. There you go, a little more throw, love it. All right, cool guys, um, now I just gotta try to duplicate that over here, and that's gonna be no simple task, but I'll keep you up to date. Okay. Just want to do a quick review so far where we stand. Normal procedure for startup here. Just confirming that everything is the way I left it. Okay, startup procedure. Everything goes exactly as expected. That is going to be so sweet, guys. Okay, cool. That's all I needed to check out. I'm gonna go ahead and get the other side done and I'll pick up where we left off. So we've got the other side finished. Everything but the mechanical linkage. So we're just getting ready to build the second linkage, which will not be exactly the same or we could just copy it, it'd be pretty easy. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just guess and check until we get everything exactly right. And we'll uh, show you when we start doing our testing for the uh, clearances. Okay, guys, we're back with uh, definitely not the finished product, but got both flaps moving with the servo. Looking good, nice and balanced. The only problem is um, right now, this side over here. 
and this side over here, but a little bit worse over here. When I actuate the flaps, when I actuate the flaps, these things are moving in and out, side to side, and it's causing movement before it actually pulls the flap which is causing a problem I'll show you on both sides see how it's slipping when I change direction and the way I did the they're sharing the same hole which I hate but um, it might be the easiest way really honestly the best way would be to take both of those out and have them share a collar but one's bent one way and one one's bent the other way so I'm gonna try to figure out if I can get a little bushing material or tighten this this bend here which is extremely difficult to do when you're just using pliers so I'm gonna do that right now let's see how it turns out okay guys we're getting really close I ended up switching this to a one piece linkage with an adjustment on each and the only problem I'm kind of still fighting with right now is just trying to cut down on the buzz the deployment is real even the retraction is really close to getting all the way back right now you can kind of see part of my problem is that that linkage if you look at that servo when I deploy it's hard to tell in the video, but that thing's moving just ever so slightly. So I gotta figure out how to shim that thing in there to hold it tight. And once I get that thing held tight, I think it's going to deploy to the right position each time. So I'll show you how I get that accomplished. Okay guys, one last step here, just putting some white lithium grease onto the hinges. I'm using a screw or a little toothpick to apply that. And I've got it, I got the control arm pulled off of the servo. Just work it in. I'm trying to get an even consistent resistance on both sides. And that helps a lot when you've got a linkage that's tied together mechanically like this. Otherwise you end up having all sorts of grief, which I've been fighting with. I'm always resistant to put grease on if I don't have to, uh, because it's just one more place for all the crap to get stuck. But uh, it seems to be helping a little bit in terms of the freedom of uh, movement. And as you can see, this is just one piece now. Um, so I think it's going to work a little better. Hopefully take care of some of that buzzing. So I'll let you see it here in a minute. Okay, guys. We got the modification done. Take off flaps, landing flaps, back to neutral, ailerons, elevator router, got all the little nicks and stuff touched up with silver, and uh, on the bottom we've got everything done here. wanted to show you guys how that turned out ended up using one 0.81 millimeter rod here's our takeoff landing and I have the setting that drops it back that's the setting that drops it back so it'll stop it from buzzing if I'm just sitting there neutral. If I'm flying, it's not going to be an issue because there will be some air pressure going across here. Um, the good news is it's got lots of support, you know, because obviously if you're not stopping the wind from getting by, it's not going to do much good. But so far, I'm pretty underwhelmed with this servo. I'm probably asking a lot of it 
I got it to stop moving by basically allowing CA to seep around it and then I went over it a couple of times to give it a nice smooth finish painted it with regular silver this is the silver it's testers enamel I'll make sure you guys get a shot of this here I'll just try to bring it close just basic silver color metal silver is what it's called anyway um, I did end up taking out this thing that I had made that would have otherwise been located up here to hold the batteries the lipos um, but my intentions tonight were to get well today and tonight were to get as much done as possible and I did I got the flaps going so now my next objective is to test everything make sure everything's still flight worthy and then basically come back to you with uh, some more videos these have been long videos so hopefully people watch them all the way thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe